Okay, um, in this video right here, we're going to use Simulink to do some uh, low-pass filtering. All right, I bring up my Simulink browser, and let's uh, create a new model here. Okay, I got a new model, move it down to there, and let's see, what are we going to do? We're going to need some sources, uh, or at least one source. We'll bring a sine wave into here, and then I am going to need to uh, plot that, so I'll click on Syncs. Take a scope icon over here, and then let's see. I'm gonna need um, some filtering, so we'll go to the continuous block, and I'll take a one over s plus one transfer function, and some commonly used blocks. How about a multiplexer? All right. So now what I want to do is I want to take the output of the mux to the scope. I'm going to run the sine wave to one of my inputs on my MUX, the output of my filter to um, my MUX, and then I'm going to also run that sine wave through my transfer function. And so here I've got a sine wave that's going to go straight through the MUX and get plotted on the scope, and then that sine wave is also going to get filtered and then uh, displayed on the same scope. Okay. Now let's see, let's put a little title in here. What we'll do is we'll call this RC low pass uh, filtering of a sine wave. All right, there you go. So I've got a little title right there. Okay, now let's run this. Double click on the scope. And let's kind of magnify it and notice. Now you've got the yellow and pink. Now which one is which? That's a good question. Which one is which? I don't know. Which one is which? Well, what can we do? Well, we can go back to our model and delete one of the inputs and then run it again okay so the top one is the yellow so what i can do there is just you know i can label that and then uh, that means that this one down here is probably the purple there you go there's kind of a kind of a cheap little tricky little way of <laughs> in case you can't remember which one is which okay so let's run it now okay so the yellow is the original sine wave and the purple is the one we're filtering okay well, let's uh, kind of zoom here. It kind of looks like we're attenuating a little bit uh, the sine wave and uh, shifting it a uh, little bit of phase shift there. All right, let's think about this. What is the frequency of the sine wave? Well, double click. And let's look at the sine wave parameters. And right now it's at omega equal to 1. Okay, great. Omega equal to 1. Now look at this transfer function here. This looks like our RC low pass filter where the numerator is one over RC. Okay, let's see, what, where were we? The sine wave had a frequency of omega equal to one. And if you recall the transfer function of our low pass RC filter, it had one over RC in the numerator and then one over RC as a coefficient in the denominator. And that one over RC was the point at which it started to attenuate. So the frequency of the sine wave is one radian. The break frequency, or the frequency where this starts to roll off, is also one frequency, or the 3 dB frequency. So that means we would attenuate the sine wave at about 3 dB. Well, 3 dB, uh, what is that? That's almost like, um, um, well, let's see, the half power point, isn't it? And uh, if you go look at our sine wave, the amplitude of the purple one is about... 0.707. You square that for power and you get one half. So yeah, we've actually knocked it down about 3 dB. And then at the 3 dB point, um, well, let's see, on a low pass filter, you're going to shift about 45 degrees, and that kind of looks like we got about a 45 degree phase shift. So yeah, this kind of syncs up with a boat plot. Now let's come over here and do some things. Let's move, or let's increase the bandwidth of our system. Well, the way we can do that is to change that numerator coefficient. If I change that thing out to 10, then I am opening up the bandwidth of this guy, and that entire sine wave should pass. Okay, well, let's see what happens. Let's run it again, and there you go. Yeah, so now the input and the output are pretty much the same. The output, purple, has a little bit of phase shift, but it has no attenuation. Okay, well, let's go back and uh, move this guy back to um, 1. Okay, so that'd kind of be our 3 dB attenuation on our Bode plot. Run it again. Okay, so magnify here. All right, now let's start decreasing that even more. Let's take it down to maybe uh, 0.5. Okay, so we're going to start to attenuate 
our bowed plot is going to start to roll off at 0.5 when our sine wave is at 1 radian. So we're going to, we should get a, quite a bit of attenuation here. And let's see. Well, yeah, we went from 0.7 to 0.5. So not a lot, but a little bit more. And the phase shift has actually increased. It's not quite 90 degrees yet. Otherwise, the peak of the purple would be where the yellow crosses the origin. But it's getting there. Let's even reduce the bandwidth of our uh, filter a little more. Call it 2.5. Okay. Okay, so the bode plot's going to drop off at omega equal to 0.25. But our sine wave is at omega equal to 1. Okay. And look what happens here. Yeah, so we're getting much more attenuation. And now the phase shift is about 90 degrees. It's a little less than 90 degrees, probably about 75 degrees. And you remember that this guy started off at 0 degrees, was a negative 45. Okay, let's even uh, reduce the bandwidth some more here. Let's take it down to point one zero, And then we'll change that guy right there. And you remember, when those coefficients matched, the bode plot started off at 0 dB and then just rolled off, attenuated at 20, d or 20 dB per decade. And here you can see we have quite a lot of attenuation. And uh, let's see, uh, the phase shift is actually about 90 degrees right now. Because uh, when the purple peaks out, you know, the yellow is about zero so you know and that's consistent with the what a bode plot does on a low pass filter phase shift starts out at zero and then at 3 db it's a negative 45 and then as s tends to infinity it's a negative uh, 90 degrees and that's exactly what we have here and then we've got quite a bit of attenuation all right great so that was a simple low pass filter and it would basically model the simple um, rc low pass filter we talked about in class all right thanks for watching